The Emerald Coast Utilities Authority has recently entered into an agreement with Infinitus Energy of Montgomery, Alabama to accept and process ECUA's recyclable material. The facility began accepting ECUA's material this May. On May 28th, members of the ECUA board and staff, various elected officials, and the media were able to visit the recycling plant in Montgomery. What they saw was a state-of-the-art waste processing system that can produce high-quality bundles of recyclable material ready for sale to manufacturers. The $35 million, 82,000 square foot facility sits on 75 acres of land and employs 110 people. Here talking about the site is Infinitus Chief Executive Officer Kyle Mowitz. Um, this is what I really want you to see is the, the paper. Um, if you look at this material, um, this is from a little too much uh, grease on the baler, but you actually don't get hit on that. So it looks ugly, but you don't get hit. Um, but this is what I want you to see. This mixed paper, what everybody talks about in a mixed waste murf like this is can you sell the fiber? You know, they're worried about the fiber because of the moisture and everything else. These bales right here, these fiber bales, number one, are all sold. Um, but I want to point out one thing to you is if you look at this bale and then you look at these bales, Okay, these are one of the first mixed paper bales we ran. This is when I would say we're not very good at what we do. Um, this is where we get better at what we do, right? So there's a big difference when you look at these bales here compared to what we're getting out now, and that's just an operational thing. So these bales are sold. We didn't get premiums on them. These bales, we got premiums on them, right? And, and that's what, the difference. And what is that? What is it about these? They look plainer and all of that, but uh -huh. is there a content of moisture difference? Yeah, so, so what was going on is we just, if, if you kind of look in the material of this, there's plastic, there's, plastic, there's um, you know, the material was really moist, which means it was sitting on the tipping floor too long, which should never happen because it starts to cook. Um, so we messed these up. This is a, a screw up. Now we can still sell them. Paper companies are turning it into pulp, so it's not a huge deal, but you're not, it's not these big. It's, as you see the rest of them, we started dialing in and get it right. That's part of operations. You know, people don't want to talk about mistakes, but that's part of the operation. Uh, sure. But you've only been in operation for about five weeks. For 30 days, actually. Yeah. yeah. One one of those weeks was a very limited uh, right. one, so about four weeks total. Um, these were one of the first. Um, we've been moving paper the whole time. Um, I asked them to keep this here because I want to show people the difference um, from where you start to where you go. And fully automated section of the facility. Um, this is all the op this is a series of optical sorters that we dial in to catch certain types of plastics. Um, here we're catching PET. We're actually ejecting it. So the optics reads it, ejects the air up and into the bale and it drops down and goes into quality control. Everything else uh, falls under and goes on through the facility to get, you know, uh, uh, silk sourced by the rest of the optical. So um, here what they used to do is optically sense here and shoot air there. What was happening, of course, when you move a bale or uh, when you move a conveyor, the plastic bottle would roll and the air would miss it, so it wasn't as efficient. Now we optically sense and shoot air within a millisecond, you know, one one thousandth of a millisecond, so it doesn't miss the bottle. Um, what we drive here from a private entity is running those costs out there down. Right. Every day, we're looking at where we can find one efficiency. If I can find efficiency a day, that's 365 efficiencies a year. Hopefully, that turns into real money. Um, so, um, what I'll tell you, the biggest thing in mixed waste is flexibility. So, when you put margins aside, you need flexibility. Um, where our profit margins will move continually up, um, and they will fluctuate. Uh, mixed waste is a interesting beast, by the way. This is not for the um, faint at heart. Um, it's uh, not a single stream material. We get hoses, dead animals, textiles, hypodermic needles. I mean, you, you name it, right? It's in here. And you have to learn how to deal with that. So what I would say is it changes every day um, is the real answer. Yeah, you'd love to hear a levelized approach, but it just doesn't work like that. 